Okay, hi everyone, thanks for coming and uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Neil Perry and this is a, a look at, well, an introduction to the MailStore server platform. So just to start with, I wanted to sort of give a, a quick sort of overview of uh, MailStore and what its real functions are. Now, as an email archiving platform, it's designed to archive all email, whether it's coming in or out of your mail platform, um, whether it's a historic email from used mailboxes or a copy of uh, new email arriving. It's also a key function is the ability to bring together any existing PST archives you may have on, on your network. So really the goal is to provide a single archive uh, for your total mail platform that uh, includes everything. It's by no means just a, a solution for exchange, even though today we will be focusing on a, a standard exchange platform, um, but it will work with uh, any mail platform, whether that's a hosted cloud-based solution like Office 365 or a hosted exchange platform. Uh, it works brilliantly with our own uh, MDMAN email platform, or even bringing in Google Mailboxes, any IMAP, POP3 mailbox that may be out there, uh, and other mail providers as well. Uh, the goal is really that you can connect to any number of different mail sources and bring them all into a uh, MailStore platform. Uh, I should mention that MailStore is a service, uh, sorry, a server platform. It's an on-premise server platform. Uh, there is a, a, a service provider edition, which I cover in a different term um, uh, webinar, but today we'll be looking at the on-premise solution. From a user's point of view, uh, users can connect to MailStore in a, several different ways, whether the default method is to connect with uh, the Outlook add-in, um, and that then allows them within Outlook to see and search their own archive very quickly. Um, you can also give users rights to see other archives, so we'll look at that a little bit later on as well. Um, other methods include there's a, a web interface that can be used on a desktop or even on a small screen device, so if you're out and about and you need quick access to the archive, the user can very easily see uh, and log in and see their archive and perform searches again. Um, or there is actually a, a mail store client, a piece of software that gives them a little bit more control. That then on top of being able to access the archive, you can also um, archive from local sources. So for example, if they've got email in certain mail clients and only in those clients, then they can push email from those. Um, usually it's a one-time solution this way. You're pushing existing email out of, let's say, Outlook Express or Thunderbird, uh, pushing it back to mail store as a central archive. The archive itself is, is very quick and powerful uh, searching capabilities. So uh, from a user's point of view, you know, being able to find messages, that's one of its key functions, really. Uh, it's very efficient and quick at um, searching for email addresses, uh, subject headers, dated messages. You know, you can look in specific time frames. You can look right down into the body of the message. You can even search for words within attached files, which is very useful if you know um, a message that contained a particular attachment and you know what was in the attachment, but you can't quite remember who possibly sent it. Um, so it's a very, very powerful searching capability. And the key sort of feature of MailStore is to allow you to reduce server load on your mail platform. And a typical reason why you know we get customers interested in MailStore is because their Exchange server is running very slow. Um, the uh, the the users' mailboxes are huge, and you want a method to be able to slim that. Uh, mailboxes down but still allow users full access to all the historic email and this is really the, the key function of MailStore. Looking a little bit of, uh, on the actual sort of um, server requirements for MailStore, I, I mentioned already it is an on-server uh, platform, it's an on-premise server platform, um, and it can be installed on the actual mail server hardware itself, and this is quite a common scenario where, you know, you install MailStore on the Exchange server or MDMAN server, um, and you use it to, to archive the local mail in that platform. But it doesn't have to be that way. Um, we have a lot of customers that prefer to run a, a dedicated mail store server or, or even a, a virtual machine. It doesn't even need a Windows Server OS. The, 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 the back-end database structure is, is actually built around Firebird. There is an option to use SQL Server if you prefer, but out of the box it's Firebird, and most of the customers stick with Firebird, even for very large deployments. Um, so, you know, a Windows 8 a client machine on a virtual machine is is, is ideal platform for, for MailStore. 
really the sort of from a system requirements point of view, um, it, it's disk access where you would really want to you know send the money and, and have the performance. Uh, it's it's other than that the CPU load is generally very low, uh, memory requirement is very low. So from a from a virtual machine point of view, it's it's really quite a you know a, a low end device you would need. From a storage point of view, what we typically see is because mail store stores email in a uh, deduplicated format, um, the equivalent email you may be pulling out of Exchange would be on average about half of what you would see. So the actual storage requirement for archiving the mail is less, which is another reason why people quite like installing it on the mail server. Because once you've archived that email and then um, deleted old email, and we'll come on to that a bit later on when you would do that, but assuming that you are going down the path of reducing the, the, the mail on the Exchange server, the space that you save in Exchange, you need less space to store that same email in Mail Store. So the overall solution is you, you free up space on your mail platform. Uh, and another key thing to remember is mail store is really easy to back up. So as a as a, a data structure, um, it's it's totally VSS aware. So you can take backups of mail store whilst it's running, um, and it's it's the way that it stores the data means that it's easy to back up. Um, the data and the differential changes over time. There's not just one great big database that changes, so it's 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 very efficient. So let's look in a little bit detail of exactly how MailStore works. So what I want to sort of introduce is a very typical basic sort of on-premise exchange scenario where you have an exchange server on site connected to the internet so it's receiving and sending SMTP SMTP email out to the internet and then your email clients are connected into exchange they may well be local Outlook users or they may be remote active sync uh, mobile devices or Outlook web access users it doesn't really matter the concepts are the same that users are connecting to exchange and so is internet email mail store as I've sort of mentioned can sit on the same server exchange or a different server it doesn't really matter but the 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 connection method is the same um, and the first thing to think about with mail store is like I said it's a database backend so there is compression and encryption there uh, and and data is being stored in a single instant store so there's only one copy of the data that it archives even if if it's you know if it sees the same message from multiple users then there's only one copy needs to be stored in the archive the container the actual mail archive containers themselves there's not just one big container that grows and grows and grows out of the box it's designed so that every 500,000 messages it creates a new container and together you can think of this as one big archive but in reality you can split it up into much smaller units and where those containers exist may well be on local drives to the mail store server or even on uh, on NAS devices shared uh, shared <clears throat> shared drives on the network uh, you've got a, the option you, and you can even move those around um, over time so if you feel that you're running out of space on one disk you can start archiving to an, uh, a new archive on a new disk or you can dismount an archive and move it it's very flexible in that respect one of the first things you need to think about with setting up MailStore is user synchronization. Um, for users to be able to connect into MailStore, they obviously need to be able to log in. Uh, and the easiest way of doing that is to link MailStore to your Active Directory. Uh, and effectively, MailStore synchronizes to the local AD and, and, and then pulls in the user accounts. It doesn't pull in the passwords. Those are looked up live against Active Directory every, every time a client tries to connect uh, and, and authenticate with MailStore. Um, but it does mean that as you um, as you add users into Exchange uh, and, and give them mail accounts, um, it's automatically syncing into MailStore. And this is a key way that we set things up. Um, we generally set up a, a, an Active Directory group. Um, we'll call that archived. I'll show you that a little bit later on. Um, and it's that group that we synchronize with Exchange so that we can very quickly just say, well, if a user is a member of that group, then MailStore automatically will add that user and start archiving their mailbox. The actual user, user synchronization happens automatically every time an archive job runs. That's an option, but that's how we recommend we set things up. So we'll see that in operation a little bit later on. 
Now, I've mentioned that you're adding users into MailStar. Each user has their own user archive, and those those archives are designed to, um, they're, they're part of the database, so they're not separate storage uh, locations, um, but they're almost like, you know, folders, virtual folders within the archive that are dedicated to each user. So there's an archive per user, and you can define permissions on the user accounts to allow one user access to another user's archive, for example. From then on, a, a, a client, a, a MailStar client that logs in would by default have access to their own archive um, and any folder structure it, it may contain. Bear in mind when you actually are archiving mailboxes, and we'll show that in a minute, um, bringing in the whole folder structure of that mailbox. So when a user logs in and looks at their mail store archive, it's not just all of the emails they've sent and all the emails they've received, it's, it's all of their folder structure they've created uh, on their mailbox. So let's have a look at the actual archiving jobs. And this is um, how I generally would recommend setting up archiving of an exchange platform. We'd start with a journaling job. Now, this is um, there's a key reason why we want to do journaling, and that's to take a copy of email as it arrives into Exchange. So we configure Exchange to, to do the journaling itself. That's a function of Exchange. And it will take a copy of all email flowing in and out and put it into a journal mailbox that we designate on the Exchange server. Then in MailStore, we set up a journaling archive job to go and collect any email it finds from that journaling mailbox. And the connection method is actually over HTTPS. It's, it's effectively simulating an Outlook web access connection. So you can appreciate at this point, it, you know, the MailStore server can do that from any anywhere that has Outlook web access to Exchange. So it definitely doesn't have to be on the same server. But this journaling job is designed to go to that mailbox pull in any messages it sees and sort them based on email headers. Who is that message from or to that's a local user? And it matches those addresses against any addresses that are in the users of MailStore already. Uh, so, you know, we may, may have three users here. Any messages for Fred that it finds, it puts into Fred's inbound journaling message um, archive. Bob, likewise, and Pete separately. So each each message it finds, it sorts, and that's the important bit, it's sorting those messages and storing them in the relevant archive. Likewise, if mails are going out through Exchange from these users, they all would be picked up by journaling the outbound message, and they would be stored under the journaling outbound mailbox. So in just a very basic way, we can set up a um, mail store to archive all new messages coming in and out of the server, sorting them for users and storing them in relevant inbound or outbound folder. And in some ways, some customers are quite happy with that as a total solution. Um, you know, from then on, you, you've archived everything new. But what about all that existing email that users have in their mailboxes? And more importantly, how do we take control of all of this mail that, that users are storing? This is where we set up a second job, and this second archiving job here is designed to actually go and collect users' mailboxes themselves. Um, and we're actually going to log in as a, as a user that has rights to do this, a user that we can give impersonation rights. Um, and that account then goes to Exchange and asks for the contents of each user's mailbox in turn, storing them under the relevant user's archive. And this is the job that collects the mailbox folder all the messages, obviously, but also, if we want to, can also, whilst it's doing that, delete old messages. But we'll come back to that a bit later on. As well as existing users' mailboxes, we well, may well have um, public folders, um, and that can also be handled by MailStore. Uh, MailStore can connect as an account that has access to see the public folders uh, and just pull in the public folders, storing them in a, a separate archive designated to public folders. Uh, it does require another account because we need to have an archive specifically for the public folders, um, but it does mean that if you, you know, if you want certain users to see these public folders in the archive to kind of mirror what they may have rights in exchange, then you can do exactly the same thing in MailStorm and, and store them separately and give the users the correct rights to see them. And then the final job that we uh, we often find we're setting up is the uh, ability to bring in existing PST archives. Often you find that over time users have created archive PSTs where they've pulled it mail out of Exchange and just stored it on local PST files on each machine or the client machine on the network. A very inefficient way of archiving email, but it makes sense that you want to bring these uh, old PSTs together. And you can run another job that's designated to do exactly that. 
it takes the PST and stores it under the relevant user's archive. So you can see how a user would potentially have journaling mail, their own mailbox, maybe access to a public folder, and also access to any existing PST files. Once the PST files have been archived, they can be deleted. They're no longer required. It's just a one-time job to bring that data together. Okay, so at this stage, I want to switch to a, a virtual machine where I've got a little bit of a demonstration um, to run through, where I'll actually effectively, in real time, show you this in, in process. Um, so uh, oh, my virtual machine's timed out whilst I've been talking, so I'll just log into that. So I've got a, a basic uh, SPS 2011 server here uh, running a very simple exchange platform. Um, but um, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about user management. So I mentioned that MailStore is going to synchronize with users um, in Active Directory. So just to give you a bit of background, I've installed the MailStore application, but I've done nothing more than just run through the installer and chosen the default path. I haven't set up anything yet. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll switch to, uh, in fact, I won't switch. I'll need to run my Active Directory. Directory user manager. Okay, and I want to create uh, a user, a power user that I'm going to use throughout the system called MailStore. And it's this user that's going to do a few tasks for me. It's going to be the user that journals the mail um, that's coming into Exchange, but it's also going to be given impersonation rights to access other users' mailboxes. Okay, so we create that account. There we go. And the next thing I want to do is I want to create a group um, to put all of my users in that I know I want to archive the mail for. So I'm going to call that just archived. So in the future, if I added any more users to the system, I could just add them to this group and I wouldn't have to do anything in MailStore to archive their mailboxes. Oh, I'm in the wrong account here. That's what, that's what happened there. Where's the archive? There we go. Uh, members. So we'll just quickly add all those members. So we've got a few people. James, Mark, me, Ross, Seema. There we go. Okay, so I've got my mail store user, I've got my archived account. Uh, so I'm pretty much done in uh, AD for now. Um, but the next stage would be to actually set up some changes within Exchange itself. So we need to do two things. We need to be able to um, create a journal rule. Um, so we'll do that first. So if under the hub transport section, we can do new journal rule. Actually, before I do the journal rule, I need to actually have just realized I haven't actually create, given my mail store user a mailbox, so uh, I best do that first. Uh, so in configuration here, new mailbox. Obviously, on different uh, SPS platforms, you could do this through the, the, the other manager just so it automatically creates a mailbox, but uh, on this uh, server, I do it this way. So an existing user, let's add... Mail store. So just I need to make sure that the mail store user has a, a, an exchange mailbox, otherwise I can't journal into it. But it also needs a mailbox to be able to access it through Outlook Web Access. I'll apologise now for this slow VM. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's not the fastest server in the world. There we go. So we're given the mail store user a mailbox. We can now. Uh, uh, set up the journaling rule. Okay, there we go. So I'll just call it journal. Journal, spell it correctly. And this is where I need to choose that mail store account. So that's that's why I just needed to create that mailbox. Uh, and I'll journal for all messages. You do have the option here to be more specific on Exchange 2010. You can say, you know, only internal messages or external send and receive messages. Or if you needed to, you can start um, journaling just for a specific group. But I'm going to do things simply and just say I'm going to journal for all users that um, are, are, are exchange, have Exchange mailboxes. Okay. 
Okay, so that's, that's set up my journaling rule. So we're all done in the Exchange Manager. Uh, now the final thing we need to do, it does depend on your version of Exchange. Now I'm running Exchange 2010 here. Um, and what I need to do now is I need to set up my impersonation rights. Uh, now in Exchange 2010, that's that's done through a PowerShell script. So just to speed things up a little bit, I've, I've got this, the, the actual PowerShell command here. Uh, this is all documented, I should mention early on actually, that we, we have all of this um, procedure documented on the install guide. So yeah, no need to take any notes from this video, but uh, uh, effectively this PowerShell script is going to say, uh, give the mail store user application impersonation rights uh, we'll just call that rights mail store impersonation. So I'll just copy that command and, and through so we can start uh, accessing other user mailboxes when we log in as the mail store account. Okay, so that's kind of the background task done. Uh, now we can start looking at actually uh, setting up things within MailStore. So I mentioned before I'd run through the installer. So you know, I've effectively downloaded the installer from our website uh, and, and run the installer. I've done nothing more than install it to the default location, uh, uh, which is C program files, and use the uh, the default settings. But I haven't I haven't set up anything. So the very first time I'm going to run the the MailStore client. Now, the MailStore client is used to do two things. It's it's used to log in and administrate MailStore as an admin account, which in this case I'm, I'm connecting to the local server, but I could easily run this client on any machine on the local network and define the server by server name or IP address uh, and do the same thing remotely. Uh, and it's also potentially used by clients if they want to log in and do more than uh, just access their archive. Um, so we're going to log in as the default admin account. Out of the box, you can it's admin and admin, nice and straightforward. You can't log in as admin and admin from a remote machine though. Uh, that's done by default. You have to change the password before you're allowed to log in for obvious reasons, for security reasons, so it's worth bearing in mind. It's generally best to, to set up the basic features on the actual local machine. Okay, so here we are. This is the, the main dashboard for MailStore server. We're on latest version 8 here. Um, there's some basic information on the right hand side the server name, obviously the OS I'm running it on, processor, disk space available. Uh, and then a little bit further down, you've got some information about the archive. Um, now I'm running a bit of a test here. Uh, and there's obviously there's no archive messages yet, uh, and I'm not very much, I'm not using very much space either. And you notice I've only got one archive store because I haven't archived enough to, to automatically generate a new archive store. Uh, and my current archive store is using the name default file group, which is the, the, the primary name that all platforms use for their very first archive store. Then I've got a bit of information about compliance, which I'll come back to a little bit later on. And what's really this is just telling me the status of the compliance settings, uh, and and then you know how many logged in users I have. Well, obviously there's just myself at the moment, but over time you potentially could see if other users were accessing and uh, mail store at the same time. So down the left-hand side, this is generally where you access all the different components in MailStore. There are some quick access points here, which you know kind of mirror what we're seeing. But generally speaking, um, I'm using everything on the tree on the left-hand side. So to start with, I want to look at our actual users. I mentioned we need to bring in the users into MailStore. Um, and that's configured under Administrative Tools, Users and Privileges. So if we have a look at our users to start with, you see there's only one account, that manual admin account that's created automatically by MailStore when it installs. What I actually want to do is I want to synchronize through directory services all of those users that I created uh, as members of the archived group. So I select directory services. Uh, it's defaulted to active directory synchronization at the top. There are other methods, which I won't go through today, but uh, for linking, in, for example, directly to an MDMAN user list uh, or other mail platforms, or even a, an LDAP server if you're connecting remotely. But we're going to do things on the local active directory. We don't generally need to enter any details into uh, into these server options. It's, it's quite rare that they, they don't auto-detect. Um, the only scenarios I've come across is when people have specific user containers in active directory and they need to specify that particular container to look in. But most of the time I, I would recommend you just leave those three windows on default. Uh, which users are we going to synchronize? Well I'm interested in only synchronizing exchange users. Yes, I, you know, there's no need to synchronize any users that aren't, uh, don't have exchange mailboxes. Um, obviously only enabled users. Sometimes there's a chance that you want to, you've got exchange accounts that aren't enabled. That allows you to make sure you're only synchronizing exchange mailboxes that are in use um, uh, and only users that are visible in the address list. Again, sometimes people pull them out of address lists and don't want to synchronize them. 
Synchronize only these groups. Well, here uh, at the moment, it's all users, all Active Directory users. And I don't really want to do that because I may well be pulling in other users that uh, aren't relevant. So by clicking on the, the, the three dots to the right there, it'll now pull up all available Active Directory groups. So if I choose now, I can synchronize only users which are in the following groups. And if I look down, there's that archived Active Directory group that I created before. So that's done two things. That's 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 linked to just that archive group. But it's proven that my Active Directory synchronization must be working because it can see the group. A little bit further down, this is quite an interesting simple tick box, but uh, automatically delete users in Mail Store Server. What that's saying is if it if it resynchronizes and it finds that a user has been removed from that archive group, then also remove the user and just the user, not anything they've archived, but just the user from Mail Store. And that's quite handy if you, you know, in the future, say, if somebody leaves the company, all you would have to do is remove them from that archived Active Directory group, and you know that Mail Store license has been recycled for you know that a user. The archive will stay static, and I'll come back to that a little bit later on when we've got some archives to look at. Right down the bottom, we've got uh, default privileges. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory, really. What do we want to give users when we create them? Um, well, out of the box, generally users only need to log on to the Mail Store server. You can say whether or not they can change their own password. It's not really relevant when they use an Active Directory. That's only really relevant when they've got passwords stored in Mail Store, which we're not doing here. Uh, whether or not they can archive new email, this is the default privileges. You can always edit these for each user individually, but what do we give new users when they set up? Whether they can export email, again, we'll look at that a little bit later on, actually export an email from the archive into other platforms. Whether they can delete anything in the um, archive, well, again, generally speaking, you don't want to do that. And then also which archive folders they have rights to see. Um, s later on, we may talk about permissions, global permissions, but generally speaking, this is something you would do on a user-by-user -user basis. You know, you give a user access to other users' archives. Out of the box, we only want to allow users to see their own archive. So I'm going to leave those settings on default. If I click on test settings, it will now run through um, a synchronization with Active Directory without actually making any changes, but it allows us to check that it can see those users, which it can. There's the full name, sorry, there's the usernames. Uh, there's obviously the location within AD. Very important is this email address. This is really the main reason we're bringing users into Mail Store, is to also store email addresses for each user. And you can see that well, it's actually just one user up here. I have an alias, any aliases that are stored in Exchange are brought in. And it's these email addresses that MailStore will use to match against when it journals email. So you can see I'm, I'm effectively just adding six users. So that all looks right to me. So if I close that and actually run through a synchronization, it's actually brought those users in successfully. And if I now go look at my user list, there they are. So stage one is done. We have all our users. And we could now log in as any of those accounts if we wanted to. Um, but what I really want to do is now start archiving some, some mail. So if we go back to the start page, we can either go to archived email here on the quick access or down the left-hand side, it's exactly the same. This is where we configure our archiving jobs. Um, and there's different archiving jobs for different I mean, we're primarily going to be talking about Exchange here, but you can see that we can archive from different email server platforms, and each one of these has subsections as well as the different types of jobs. Or we can be archiving from clients. This is when I mentioned if you're running the Mail Store client on your own machine, you may think, oh, actually, I want to pull the email out of Thunderbird, let's say. Or if we have existing email archives in different file formats, PST files that we've mentioned already, um, but you know if we've got EML or MSG files, if any of my MDMAN customers out there may recognize the MSG file format, uh, bring them in that way. I won't really touch on the Mail Store proxy in this webinar. It's more of an advanced feature. But if anybody's interested in knowing a bit more about that, that's primarily for when you're connecting to remote POP accounts and you need a method of sort of journaling between the client and the server. But we're not going to cover that in, in this particular session. Um, so we're interested in archive and exchange. If you kind of remember back to the diagram, the first thing we want to do is archive the journaling mailbox. So our exchange platform is now already taking a copy of all email coming in and out and putting it into a mailbox called Mail Store. And we want to bring that mail in, uh, sort it for the relevant users, and and um, and, and 
well, and, and put it into the user archives for those users. So our options here are to archive in either a single mailbox. Well, we're not doing just a single mailbox. We're actually pulling in a journal mailbox. We're not doing multiple mailboxes. We're not looking at public folders. This is this final option here, um, which MailStore refers to as in and outbound email automatically. Archive email automatically on transmission journaling. Well, that, that's the, the phrase that I'm looking for. So if we look at how this job works, it's, it's saying how do we want to access the, uh, the um, Exchange server? And I'm going to leave it on the default HTTPS because it's the, the most flexible and secure method. But you can see you've got a few options here if you, if you need to connect over IMAP or POP3 protocols. I'm going to ignore SSL warnings, primarily because I know that my Exchange server is using a self-signed SSL certificate and up with an error otherwise. And that will ignore those warnings. So it's quite a handy thing to do. Um, I'm going to connect to local host because it is running on the same machine. But here you could easily put in the IP address or the the the, uh, the, the server name on the network, or even a fully qualified rootable domain name if you if you're archiving over the internet. So let's not forget, we're, you know, there's nothing stopping you going and connecting to a remote Exchange server here, provided that you've got uh, Outlook Web access to it. I'm going to log in as that mail store account that I created before with the, the password I created. I don't therefore need to define a mailbox. That's only really relevant if you're logging in as one user, but you need to connect to a specific mailbox of another user. Well, in this case, I'm actually going to connect to the mail store mailbox as well, so I can leave that section blank. Uh, I'll click on test to see if it will connect. Okay, so it's connected successfully, so that's good. Now notice here there's the option to say synchronize with Active Directory before archiving. I tend to turn that on because that will re-kick off that uh, Active Directory synchronization we just set up every time this job runs. And the idea there is I want to make sure that if there are any new ad uh, users added to AD that they get brought into MailStore before we try and archive a journal mailbox that may contain email for them. It just stops you missing those few messages. Uh, what do we do with messages it, can, it archives that it can't sort? Because this is possible and quite often the case that uh, you've forgotten to add some email addresses or users into MailStore and it, it finds a message in the, in the journal mailbox, sorry, tries to archive it and can't match. Well, there's two options. The default, which is what I'll, I'll leave here, is to archive messages into a specific folder under the admin user's own archive called unknown email addresses. You can choose where that folder is, you can choose your different location if you want, but effectively what we're saying is archive that message anyway, but just put it into a sort of catch-all location. Or don't archive the message and leave it in the journal mailbox. I don't personally like that option because if you do that, short term it's not a problem, but if you tend to leave that on for a week or two, you, you find that your journal mailbox in exchange will just grow and grow and grow because it's keeping old messages that are not for users you've set up in MailStore. And I have come across scenarios where that's grown into gigabytes and gigabytes. And in effect, what that does is it slows down this job because every time it has to check those messages. So tend to stay away from that option where possible. When the emails are successfully archived, should you delete them in the origin mailbox? Well, yes, because this is a journaled copy. Bear in mind, the, the original messages got through to the, the Exchange user's mailbox. This is a copy of that message. So as soon as I've archived it successfully, I can delete it from Exchange. Uh, and that's important to remember because people sometimes think, well, I don't want to do journaling Exchange because my experience of journaling is I just end up with a huge mailbox. Well, if you never delete the messages, yes, you will end up with a huge mailbox. But MailStore is actively deleting that mail every time it runs this job. In a little while, I'll schedule this job, and you'll see I'll actually run this every five minutes. So really, this mailbox, this journal mailbox in exchange, will only ever contain the last five minutes worth of email. So it should be quite small, even on a very busy server. Um, last page here really is just the connection timeout. We'll leave it on the default, but that's effectively allowing it to, you know, to, to time out after 300 seconds if, if there's no traffic. Um, you give the job a name, and you can leave it as the default, but I like to uh, give it a slightly more meaningful name just so I know what it's doing. And then the option that finally is, do I run this job manually now as soon as I click finish? Well, why not? Let's, let's run that job. Um, so you can see now that the progress view, it's running it manually, it's connecting to Exchange, and it's, it's, it's effectively mount, found that journal mailbox, and very quickly, because I haven't really received any emails since we've set up this, um, it's journaled that, that mailbox. So uh, just to quickly sort of uh, show that happening, what I'll do is I've actually got uh, an Outlook session running here that uh, if I log in as myself, there we go, that profile I think. Uh, 
Uh, apologies for the slow VM. Here we go. Um, obviously, this would normally be running on a client machine, not on the actual server, but it's just so I can I can run through things quickly on one machine. If I if I send a, a quick uh, email to just uh, the user, uh, Fred, uh, test it doesn't really need to be anything. Um, we'll send that. If I now switch back to MailStore, there's that journaling job. So in the background, I'm expecting Exchange to send a journaled copy into that journal mailbox. If I rerun that job, it should hopefully find that mail and, 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 and store it accordingly. There you go. So it's found one item and it's archived one item. If we now look over on our left-hand side, this is where we access the user archives. Here's the archive for the admin user. Well, there's nothing in that yet because the admin user hasn't received anything. Here's all the other archives for every other user on MailStore. So you can see that there's a, I can only expand the user Neil, which is who I sent it from. And there's a, a journal archive, uh, sorry, a journal outgoing mailbox, and there's the message that I sent. And then because I sent it to an internal user, Fred, Fred will have an incoming folder and there's the, the same message. There's only one message archived in MailStore because it's the same message, but you you know effectively both users have seen that. Fred's uh, sorry, Neil has sent it to Fred. So that's taking care of journaling mail. And if I did nothing else now, uh, as I received and sent me email, you would see these users receiving journal incoming and journal outgoing folders filling up with all mail from now onwards. But the next thing we want to do is to bring in those users' historic email. So we're going to set up a, another, in fact, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I, I mentioned I did this, but I didn't actually do it. I should really schedule this job, uh, this journaling job. So I'll, I'll click on the scheduling tab. I'm actually going to run this shed, schedule every five minutes. Uh, and as I can do, because it's a local job, I'll just run it as the local system account. Very simple step, but I, I forgot to do that there. So, oh, sorry, tell the light. I can't, I can't run it as the local system account. Uh, I need to run it as a, as a, a local, an actual account on, on Windows. There we go. And then, yeah, okay. And if it's the password. Okay, so that's created a, a journal job. In fact, it will be that second one. That, that was the one that failed, so I'll get rid of that one because that won't work. So there, there's the, the schedule. That's a Windows schedule task that effectively will run, rerun that uh, archive job here every five minutes and we can see it's running because we can see that the, the last run time was 14.35 so as we come back into here we should see this time will change um, as you know every five minutes it'll update and rerun so that job's running all the time in the background the next thing I want to do is create a job to pull in all of the users mailboxes so again we're going to archive an exchange server this time we're going to select multiple mailboxes and how do we connect? Well, we're going to connect over HTTPS. Ignore the SSL warnings again because we don't want them to pop up. Uh, I'm going to connect to local host again because I can do it. It's the same machine. I'm going to log in as that mail store account with the, the mail store account password. So this is effectively what's using that um, impersonation rights. I need an exchange. I'm going to log in as mail store, but I'm going to ask for Fred's mailbox, Neil's mailbox, James's mailbox, all these different user mailboxes. Now, because we're accessing mailboxes, we have a little bit more control here now. We can actually say, well, what folders are we interested in? And by default, deleted items, drafts, junk email, outbox are excluded folders. We can configure that here um, by unticking this box, or we can specify specific folders to include in this archive job or exclude. Now, for this job, I'd I'm not really going to do anything out of the ordinary, but this does allow us to do some quite clever things because we can, you know, we can have jobs that say, uh, actually, I do want to just pull in the deleted items, for example, and and maybe, uh, you know, d delete older deleted items that are maybe only a week old. But we'll we'll come back to that a little bit later on. So for the basic job to pull in the user mailboxes, I want to pull in everything apart from deleted items, drafts, junk email, and an outbox. Uh, there's a bit of a filter here. Do we archive unread messages? Yes, I tend to say it's a good idea to even archive them if they're unread. Um, do we only archive old messages? Sometimes I get customers tick this option. I tend to say no, don't don't choose to only archive old messages. Archive everything you find in that user's mailbox. The reason for that is if you archive everything, you don't have to think, well, let's say you're only archiving messages that were six months old and then deleting them. 
how do you know if a message is six months old or not? Well, you've kind of got to make that assumption. You end up doing a search within Outlook in your local mailbox and a search within MailStore if it's possibly maybe only just six months old. So it's much better, in my opinion, to archive everything. Have a little bit of overlap. So, you know, you will have messages that are still in Outlook that are in the archive. But you just know then that when you do a search in MailStore, you're searching across every message you've ever received, even if you only received it 10 minutes ago. And it just makes it a lot better, nicer experience for users, really. What we may be interested in doing later on is to actually delete old messages. And this is the option here. By default, MailStore will never delete anything in the mailbox. You have to turn this option on. But if you do want to slim down what's in the user mailbox, this is where you can say, if a message is older than, let's say, six months, as is our example, then delete it. So if it gets archived successfully and it's older than six months, then delete it. And every time this job runs, it will delete messages it finds that are older than six months. If you run the job once a day, which is typically what we do with this job, then effectively it's deleting a day's worth of email that was six months ago. For this example, and, and what I'd recommend when you're testing mail stories, don't delete anything. Think of mail store as just a, a copy of, of mail. Don't use it to delete messages in, in mail in users' mailboxes until you're committed to using the product. Um, you can put mail back into mailboxes, but it's by no means you know just a simple undo. You have to go through each user and, and move things around. So whilst you're testing, let's not delete anything. There's our connection timeout. We'll leave that as default. Uh, batch processing is saying, well, how many concurrent jobs shall I run at once? It's that kind of down to the hardware um, and the performance of that hardware. Um, but typically, it will run five concurrent sessions, uh, H you know, Outlook Web Access, HTTPS sessions at once. And we'll leave it on the default. Which users do we want to <clears throat> archive the email for? So we're connecting to mailboxes now, and it's the username that's going to pass it when it asks for the mailboxes. So if we leave it on the default, it's going to it's going to try and collect mailboxes for every user that's set up in MailStorm. That's perfectly fine uh, for, for most scenarios. But if we wanted to, and because I want to speed things up a little bit, I think I'll just I'll you know, I could just select a couple of mailboxes. Uh, for memory, I think most of these mailboxes are quite small, so I'll, 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 I'll let it do them all. There's the option to synchronize with Active Directory, so if there are any new users added, let's add them uh, before we run the job. Uh, next, and we can run um, Exchange, I'll, put, I'll say Exchange mailboxes. We'll run it after it's finished. So now what it's doing is it's going to connect to Exchange, log in as the mail store account, and ask for each user's mailbox. And you can see it's finding a lot more mail now because it's uh, it's going through each mailbox and, and archiving them as it finds them. It is preserving the folder structure as well of these mailboxes. So once it's done, it might take a little time just to pull in uh, a few hundred messages. We should be able to see under the archive those, um, those messages that um, have been added. Okay, while it's while it's doing that, uh, I'm just aware that uh, we've we're not got an awful lot of time. Um, I'll I'll just um, mention the the client access into MailStore. Um, so far, I sort of quickly saw me look in, in Outlook um, to to see the, you know the messages that I had. Um, but how does a user access um, the the archive? Well, at the moment, you see, I've got Outlook uh, 2010 here. I don't have um, any MailStore option, and that's because I haven't installed the client, the sorry, the Outlook uh, access method for MailStore. So I'll just minimize the, uh, the, the that in the background, so we can, uh, in fact, we can minimize this as progress as well. When you install MailStore, you'll notice on the desktop uh, there's a link here. Oops, sorry, no, there. Install MailStore client on other computers. What that is is just a simple, straightforward link to the installers for the Outlook add-in or the client or indeed the, the proxy server. Well, I'm not interested in the proxy server. What I'm interested in here is the Outlook add-in. So if you um, run this MSI on any machine that's running Outlook where you're using these access, then uh, you can add the Outlook add-in. You don't have to, you can, you can copy this installer any way you like. Uh, there is there are instructions as well for running this over a group policy if you want to deploy it to a large number of users. I won't cover that here. That, that itself is uh, uh, reasonably in-depth, but there's a very good guide on, on running through that. So instead, I'll just run the installer uh, on this machine, I appreciate this is the server, but it just it means I can run things all locally uh, without jumping around different VMs.
Okay, so here's the installer. Uh, very basic install. I'm just going to let it install to the default path under Program Files x86. Done. I mean, there's not there's no real settings to it. Yes, I do need to allow it to be installed. Okay, that's done. And now, if we switch back to Outlook now, I'll choose that profile. You can see straight away it's, it's loading the mail store Outlook add-in. Now the difference is we've got a new ribbon bar. There it is, mail store. And this is what a user would see is this new bar. So if they want to do a search, they can just type a search in here, a very quick search, you know, email address or subject, anything that's sort of a general search over the whole mail store archive that they have access to. So generally speaking, that's their own archive. Or we can do a more advanced search, or we can browse the archive. So let, let's just choose Browse Archive. Um, I think hopefully in the background my archive should have been uh, populated. So this is the first time our, this user has authenticated with MailStore, so it needs the credentials. When you deploy MailStore client with um, group policy, you can pre-populate this, but uh, as we're just doing this manually, I need to, to fill in the server name. Uh, now obviously, normally it would be the, the name of the server on the network. Um, I can just put in local host because I'm on the same machine, but uh, actually it's probably a good idea just to put in the IP address. Uh, 79.245, I believe, this machine. I'm going to log in as the my AD account. Um, I'll choose to remember the password. There is an option to link in with Active Directory, uh, sorry, with Windows Authentication. Now, I can't do that on this example because I'm logged into the server and I'm not logged in as this Neil user. I'm logged in as an admin account, so that's why using it here but generally speaking clients could just use Windows authentication they will and it will then pass the user account and password that they're currently logged in with okay so so in the background it's connected and this is the main client view of MailStore there's my archive so you can see that uh, I'm Neil there's my archive there's my exchange archive with the folder structure and I've got a few folders uh, few mails in the inbox. There they are, just some random emails. And I've got uh, other subfolders, some which have more emails in than others. And we can scan down that way. Now you'll notice that by default it says HTML view has been disabled due to security reasons. Open the message to display the image and format. So well we, if we double click on the message that should sorry if we open a message that should open it up in, in, in Outlook as a as a local message and then now, now we can see it with uh, um, let's download the picture so it looks a bit a bit better. Uh, with without with that wall with all the standard HTML content, so users can open and view messages very quickly. They don't have to restore them, and that's often overlooked. If I wanted to, I could easily just reply to this message or forward it on. I haven't yet restored anything. I'm just viewing what's in my archive here. If I want to do a search, um, let's see if I, I think if I do a search for spa, let's see if we'll find anything. No, it's not a good idea. Um, free. That must there must be something in there that's free. There we go. So you can do very quick searches across the whole archive. That's the basic search, and you know, you know finding certain deals that uh, UK deals have passed to, to this account. Um, or if I want to do more advanced search, then I've got more detailed options here. Uh, so again, let's say I did that search for free, but I'm only interested in free in the subject line. Maybe I want to choose who it's from or to. Well, I can, you know, I can, I can define that down here as an address, or I can just have a global search up at the top. Where do I want to search? Well, I've got access currently to everything in my archive, but I may be interested. In, well, I'm, I'm only interested in looking in this folder, let's say. Um, there, so it actually defines the folder. I've got a date range, you know, do I want to look at messages that are recent or is there a custom and range, they say I know specifically, you know, a month that it was received in, whether or not it's got an attachment um, or not, and potentially if you do a search, I should say at the top actually, see if there's attachment contents, that's where I could look in just words within word attachments, Excel documents, any, anything that's a standard office file. Um, another thing you can do with the search, the advanced search here is if you had quite a complex search, it's, it's quite beneficial to be able to save that search and give it a name. Um, and then in the future, should I want to rerun that search, I can do that um, quickly from the browse archive window. So there, I've run that search, it's found some messages. 
like I say, if I went into Browse Archive, there's my saved searches, so I can rerun that search instantly. So you can create nice searches, you can store them, and you can just effectively use the Browse Archive to rerun searches for specific information. If I wanted to, say I did want to actually restore that message, not open it, then I can click on the Restore Message view, and, and what it's actually asking you to do is to drag the message, this is now the message, into the relevant Outlook folder where you want it. So it could be your inbox, it could be you know one of these subfolders. Um, by, and by dropping it there, it'll then be added, unfortunately. I've done. It's not easy to spot there because it's one of the similar messages, but uh, uh, hopefully you should see that the, the number went um, higher there, so it did definitely... Re um, restored that exact message. So that's the general view of, of Outlook users. If we go back um, to the mail store client, hopefully that job should be well completed by now. Yes it has. So actually archive 363 messages. You can see down the left hand side now that you, you, we kind of already saw this because my archive here Here's my Neil archive. I know I've got all these folders. So you can see the folder structure here as well. There's all the messages in each one of these that I've, I've sorted over time. You know, I can view them. Within the Mail Store client, it views the HTML messages live. I mean, they're, they're, I mean you, you allow a message, um, lookup of um, actual content, but uh, you know, it views them live. Um, you can restore them here if you want to. You can say, well, actually push it out to any local clients that I'm running on the machine, running Mail Store clients. So you don't, you know, this is another way of getting the messages restored without using the Outlook add-in. You can view the internet headers to get more idea of the actual message content, um, or you can just save it, uh, you know, out to a different format. If we go back to our archive jobs. You notice that we ran, uh, there's the mailbox job. I haven't scheduled that, so really I, I ought to schedule that to run once a day. 2 a.m. is absolutely fine. I'll run it as my uh, main admin account. So now, every day, 2 a.m., it's going to re-poll those user mailboxes. Now, because it's already pulled them in, I'm because you can skip most of those messages. It doesn't have to re-archive them every time. So the very first time you pull in very large user mailboxes, it may take you know many hours, but then daily you may be looking at minutes to uh, to update a user's mailbox. Last couple of things we may want to do. Um, I mentioned early on public folders. Well, you can archive a public folder structure. Um, I won't go through the full job, but effectively, you know, you'd connect to the host, uh, local host, um, ignoring warnings. What user do we need to log in as? Well, the mail store account should have access to the public folders. Let's see if it can see it. Yep. What folders do we want to access? So we can, we can, if you saw that, then I, I clicked on the, the three dots next to which folders, and I can actually click on show effective folders. Now, <laughs> as it happens on this install, I don't have any root folders, but uh, if I had public folders, then they'd be listed here, uh, and I can select which ones to, to archive. Uh, whether to delete them again, like I said, and then and then where do you want to store them? Now, generally speaking, with public folders, what people like to do is they like to create a separate uh, archive for them um, and then archive them there. I won't run this job because there's nothing to archive. Well, that job then we would schedule to again run maybe once a day at maybe sort of three, maybe four a.m. Af after the user mailbox job, and it would be its whole purpose is to go and collect the public mail sorry, the public folders and just store them under a specific archive for those public folders. Um, I did also mention what, what happens if you've got existing PST files. Well, there's two ways of looking at this. You can either bring them all together on the server, so you know, instead of them being scattered around your network on client machines, bring them all into the server and then run a job on the server. You see here we're now archiving PST files. Um, it's for single users. Generally speaking, we're now talking about a PST file which is that's been archived for a user. It only contains email for that user. There is the option to scan a PST file and sort on email addresses, but generally speaking, you know, we're not we're not talking about that that here. Um, so point it to the actual uh, PST file. You can if you if you run in Outlook, you can pull it directly from Outlook here. But I'm actually going to connect to the PST file, uh, and I think that I've got an example PST file actually. 
uh, here. So this is a, a PST file for, for my user, Neil, that just contains some Groupon mail. If it was archived with a password, you could enter it here. I, I haven't used a password for this particular PST file. Now I can choose what I want out of that PST file, so I can define folders. Um, what's nice is, you know, if I said add here, it will go and read the structure of the PST file and show me what it contains, and then allows me to say, well, actually, I'm only interested in, you know, that folder, let's say, or, or that folder, and whether or not I want to include subfolders. Well, I'll, I'll archive the whole PST file. I'm quite happy to do that. Uh, there's a show effective folders, which is quite nice. So you can see now that it's saying, well, archive everything apart from, you know, just the ghosted out, the deleted items and the drafts and an outbox. They're, they're excluded folders, so they've been ghosted out. So that's a good way of checking what it's going to archive before it actually does archive it. Uh, I won't delete anything in this PST file. You could do that if you want, but at the end of the day, well, I'm only going to archive this once, so I may as well just manually delete the file afterwards. Where do I want to put this PST file archive? Well, this is for me. This isn't it's a, a PST archive for Neil, so I'll choose the Neil user, and I'll, and I'll run that straight away. So it's now going to scan that PST file, bring in the folder structure, bring in those messages, uh, and store them under my account. While it's doing that, it's a little bit slow on this server than usual, um, I'll switch back to, uh, I sort of showed you the Outlook view for clients, but let's have a, a quick look at the web interface. MailStore runs its own web server, it's a HTTP or HTTPS web server, I tend to only recommend using the, the secured web server, it's running on port 8462 by default, so this is the, uh, the local server name on 8462. This is where you log in as the relevant user with their AD credentials effectively. You can change the language at the top. There's also a mobile version which I've, if I've got time I'll, I'll quickly switch to. Uh, no, we don't need to remember the password. So it's very similar to the Outlook view. In fact, it's kind of the same interface in a lot of ways. But there's my archive down the left-hand side. You know, I can see the structure. I can look at messages. If I want to, I can open them directly into Outlook or Outlook Express, or I can restore them back to a mailbox, choose the, the email address to, to send it to. Uh, there's my advanced search, which you've, you've already sort of seen and, and, and appreciated. But uh, generally speaking, the web interface is a great way if you, you know, you're not on your own machine and you need quick access to the archive. If I log out, I will just quickly show you the, uh, the mobile version. It gives you a kind of an idea if I, if, I, if I shrink this down a little bit to represent a, a phone. If you imagine you were connecting with a phone, then it would look a little bit more like this. Uh, let's log on. So you you know at the top straight away you get your root folder, then you get your structure, and you know we can choose an actual folder and we can look at messages. So it's a way of viewing the archive very quickly on a, on a phone. Uh, on an iPhone or Android, I mean, it looks almost like an application. It, 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 it looks nicer than it does within a small browser window, but it gives you an idea of how it would look. Okay, so those public fold that public folder jobs should have completed by now. So if we have a look under my archive, you see I've got my exchange folders, which we pulled in from the mailboxes. There's my journal, and now I've also got an Outlook uh, data file and that contains the particular Groupon folders that I've just archived. But what if I wanted to bring that into here? What if I wanted to move that Groupon folder into my main archive? I don't really want to have it all separated out like that. Well, it's not a problem. You can right-click on any entry uh, and, and move it to a new location. So let's move it into Exchange, Inbox, bang. So now it's all under the one location. If we go right back down here, because that archive doesn't contain anything now, it's, it's completely been hidden. So once you've pulled in those PST files, you don't have to keep them separately. You can merge things together. You've got some other options in here as well. You can rename folders, um, or you can export them. That's quite a useful feature. If you, if you at any point, if you said, well, actually, I want to get all of this email out, you know, at this root level, and let's export it to, you know, another PST file, or let's send it to an Exchange mailbox or an IMAP uh, account. Very useful to be able to do that. Uh, I've used that function to to bring mail in from one platform like Exchange and then push it back to an IMAP server like MDemon. Uh, so there are some quite uh, uh, clever, almost hidden features here in MailStore. 
Last couple of things, we're running a little bit uh, late on time, but the last sort of things I wanted to show you, I mean, I've kind of just touched on exporting there at the, at the folder level, so you know you can always export a folder, you can export a mail if you wanted to, oops, export to there, or you can select multiple messages and export them to a different location. If you ran a search, if we go back into our searches here, um, and uh, let's run another search. I'm going to search that actually it searches for something that would have helped. <laughs> oh, actually, you see by default because I'm logged in as the admin user, it's only looking in the admin um, admin archive. But I could actually perform a search across all of the user archives. There we go. So I found some results. So I can easily now um, do a Control A to select all of them, all the search results. So that's 289 messages, and then export them. So if you need to export very specific items, you can do a quite specific search that you know only returns those items, and then export them. You can create export jobs as well. Not often use this feature, but sometimes uh, people want to say, well, run a specific uh, export. Let's say we want to um, create a PST file of Fred's archive once a day or once a month. Uh, you can, you know, you can set up a job in the same way that we're archive an email. We can set up a job to export email at a set schedule. I won't run through that now. It'll take a little bit of time. Um, I mentioned very early on permissions, and we've kind of got some data now. So let's assume a scenario where, um, let's shrink things down a little bit. Let's say that uh, Neil needs access to Fred's mail archive. What we can do is we can go into the users. We go into the user Neil, because this is the one where we're, we're changing permissions. We're saying what folders, and this is where we define it at the bottom, which folders can the user Neil see? So we can easily add any other archive folders that's set up in mail store. So if we add Fred, um, we say Neil's got read access on Fred's folder. Whenever Neil logs in now, you can see both Fred's and Neil's archive perform searches across both of them or just one of them. Um, probably the last thing I do want to just quickly touch on, because I, I did mention it early on, storage locations. People often say to me, well, how does mail store store data? The storage locations is where you define them. On a default installation, everything gets stored into the C mail archive folder. And then each archive store is a separate folder in its own right and stores messages. Every, if we click on this create automatically, every 500,000 messages, a new archive is created in that location, which by default is this email archive. Obviously, wherever you see a path, you can change that. So we could easily be storing these on a, on a shared drive now. Um, there, in their own right, if I actually bring up, um, oh, I don't have one open, oh, there we do, there we go. Uh, so if I bring up the actual folder, the Cmail archive folder, you can see that is that file group. It is just a folder. It contains uh, a database file, that, which is like the index. Index files, which are for every user of the system, they have their own search index. They're actually recreated automatically, so they're not that important to be kept. Uh, it's locked at the moment because it's in use. Uh, and then the actual data is, is stored in a, in a strange sort of um, folder structure with lots of files that grow. I mean, there's not many messages here, but over time you have lots of these small DAT files. So if you think of the archive as, as, um, as this whole, and then the actual configuration is this master database, that in its entirety is a mail store install. I, I can copy that folder or back up that folder knowing that I can restore it to any machine run, that I want to run MailStore on. I copied that to another machine into a mail archive folder, over installed with MailStore and pointed it to, to that folder, I'd have a complete rebuild of my MailStore application. All of the settings, all of the jobs and all of the archive. So it's really nice to work with from an administrator's point of view when you want to um, you know, know that in the future you may need to migrate it to a bigger hardware, or you may want to move some of the file groups around. We've only got one here, but we could have you know ten file groups. You might think, well, actually, I want to, you know, detach this file group uh, and then reattach it from a new location. For example, that's quite a common request. It's nice and easy to work with in that respect. You don't have to worry about a, you know, a complicated SQL database backend. It's all self-contained within nice, simple-to-use Fibro databases. So that kind of wraps up everything I wanted to cover with the, the sort of main overview of MailStore. Um, I'm happy to hang around for a little while now. If there are any questions that people may have, please feel free to ask them. But uh, hopefully that's uh, given you a good taste there.